what makes battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles attractive on the used car market and how does that differ from the internal combustion engine vehicles? Hello everyone, we are Work Group 2, Theme 3 and today we will provide an answer to this question. Just before we jump in, I'll show you the agenda for today. First, we will talk about how we translated this business problem into a data analytics question. Following that, we will talk about what we did with the raw data to make it suitable for the analysis. After that, the description descriptive statistics will be presented. Following that, we will present the results of our analysis. And finally, we will provide recommendations based on the results. So let's start. The business question we are trying to answer today is what makes the battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles attractive on the used car market? And how does that differ from the internal combustion engine vehicles? It is important to know, since the market share of this kind of vehicles are growing, however, the car companies don't know what makes this car more or less attractive on the used car market. So to find this out, we translated this business question into a data science question, which is which configurations or attributes cause BEV or PHEV prices to depreciate slower and faster based on the characteristics of used vehicles currently listed on the used car market. For the analysis, we used a public data set about used vehicle listings from the US. The initial sample consisted of around 400,000 listings, but after removing the outliers, missing values, and values without explanatory power, we ended up with a sample of 140,000 instances for our analysis. To find out what attributes make the car price depreciate faster or slower, we included 16 attributes in total, from which one was the dependent variable, which was price, and the other 15 were all dependent variables. When looking at the location of all the listings, it is configured that 94% originate from the United States. As seen on the heat map, the highest concentrations of the listings is found along the east and the west coast. Additionally, there are some clusters found in some of the capital cities, such as Denver, Colorado, and Atlanta, Georgia. This would be expected, as these areas are densely populated. So let's dive deeper into the configurations of the different types of cars. We will compare the entire sample against the hybrid and electrical car. So looking at the overall sample, the vast majority of cars have a six-cylinder engine. This is different from hybrid and electrical cars, as the four-cylinder engine is the most commonly found. Next, the four-wheel drive is the most common in the total market. However, looking at the hybrid and electric cars, the four-wheel -wheel drive is the most common. We see a slight difference in the manufacturer as well. Where Ford, Chevrolet, and Toyota are the most common in the entire sample, Toyota, Ford, and Honda are the most common for the hybrid and electrical cars. The automatic transmission is the most common in the total sample, and this counts for the hybrids and electrical cars as well. Next, while almost half of their car listings are sedans and SUVs, the most common type for hybrid and electrical cars seems to be the hatchback. And finally, we see a slight difference in the most common colors. In general, the white, black, and silver color is the most common. However, for hybrid and electric, these are white, silver, and gray. The hybrid and electrical cars make up only 1% of the total market. Hybrid cars are about seven times more common than electrical cars. The average price per day fluctuates between the $10,000 and the $41,000. If we go more into details and look at the conditions of the car, it is noticeable how the condition shows strong effect on the price. The better the condition, the higher the price. The steep decline is especially notable in the electric car. In terms of predictive analysis, we have used certain techniques in order to answer our aforementioned data science question. Uh, firstly, we use a simple k-means measure to conduct a phase validity check. By doing so, we have concluded that our data can be clustered into 10 groups, as you can see from the graph. Uh, based on the output, we concluded that uh, the between group heterogeneity is on a moderate level. Uh, you can see that from the distribution of the share across the 10 groups, there is not really a major skews to be uh, viewed. And this analysis motivated us to conduct 
a supervised regression analysis in a bit to understand which variables truly significantly influences the price appreciation of electric, hybrid, and conventional cars. Secondly, um, like we mentioned earlier, we have performed a supervised linear regression model with price as the dependent variable. In order to understand which variables um, or better said configurations uh, significantly affect the price action of used electric, hybrid, and conventional cars. Thereby, we have used the M5 prime feature selection, which is one of the most popular for linear regression and uh, reported significant correlations, which means anything, any value, any variable above 0 0.10 um, in terms of p value. And of course, the correspondent standard coefficient, which reports us the standardized size effect of the variables compared to the price variable or our dependent variable. And this has resulted in the following interesting results, which we can view from the table. Judging from the variables that have a significant effect on the price depreciation of the different types of cars and the difference of their size effects, which you can see from the standard coefficients um, across the uh, different types of uh, cars, uh, we can infer that the electric and hybrid um, cars compared to the ICQ, of course, is still in its infancy compared to the saturated ICV market. This can also be derived from the types of variables, given that we can infer that certain high quality and low quality configurations, or better said, uh, attributes, uh, have a bigger effect on these types of cars compared to ICV cars. At this point, we can answer to the questions, what configurations make PEV and PHEV cars attractive in the used market, and how does these optimal configurations differ in the SEV market? We start by addressing the first question. Our model shows that the optimal configuration in the electric car market embeds a four-wheel drive rebuilt car. The hatchback model seems to be the worst one, since it leads to fast price depreciation. On the other hand, the most attractive characteristics in the hybrid car market are new conditions SUV cars. In this case, four-cylinder vehicles are affected by fast depreciation. For both the electric and the hybrid cars, we can affirm that the luxury label makes prices depreciate at a lower rate. This phenomenon is also true for the ICV market. For what concerns the second question, our model shows that the impact of different configurations on price depreciation is higher for the electric and hybrid markets than it is for the ICV market, as we can deduce by the smaller coefficients associated to the most impactful characteristics in the ICV market. Indeed, the size of the coefficients shows that the hybrid and electric markets are still immature. We can affirm that in these markets there is a lack of diversification since configuration has a big impact on price. Moving to our recommendation, we would suggest not using the model to make predictions, but only for a face validity check. Indeed, the model does not provide interesting knowledge to address the business question, but it only provides obvious correlations. This is caused by the fact that the dataset is affected by several limitations. It does not include features regarding customizable options, it lacks standardization, and it does not include many examples of electric and hybrid vehicles. We believe that it would be necessary to gather more data. However, this is costly, therefore we should make a cost-benefit analysis in order to understand whether it is convenient for the company or not. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you for staying with us and let us know if you have any questions.